Greetings, family, and welcome to another episode of Ask Dr. Mumbi. My name is Dr. Mumbi Saraki. How you doing? How's everything going? I really do pray, family, that you are well in all your ways and that you're moving into living life very much on your own terms, in your own narrative, and in your own story. So I recently um, released on my Patreon uh, this whole story of how Kenya has now, uh, our president has opened up the borders to the entire world. And a lot of my Patreon family um, inbox me and were asking me to actually do a show on it and to, you know, to kind of explain the deeper meanings of what is really going on. Family, okay, so on the one hand, in, okay, so in case you don't know, uh, the Kenyan president on 1212, ironically, um, which is our Independence Day, he announced that uh, Kenya would be opening its borders to the entire world. And, you know, everyone could visa in, it would become, we've become now a visa free nation. And um, it's not really visa free like that because you still have to fill out. It's like they've moved us into the digital realm. So first of all, it's not exactly free. I think you have to pay something like $30 every time you come into Kenya. So if you come into Kenya, you go to Tanzania. No, well, there's the East African community. But if you come to Kenya, you go to Malawi, and you come back to Kenya. Every time you enter our borders, you have to pay a certain price. But there's also a certain certificate that you have to fill out. We acknowledge the ancestors in the Wind family. They've been so active today. So there's a particular form you have to fill out. So it's not really visa free because you still have to give them your, buy your information. And then when you come in, there's a short process, but everyone can now get into the country. So if you're familiar with Kenya, and I mean, there's, I don't want this to be taken the wrong way. And I hope we can be mature and do some adulting and, and really listen to what I'm about to say. On the one hand, this has been, you know, this is seen as a great thing because now, uh, you know, African-American brothers and sisters, our African diaspora brothers and sisters from the Caribbean, from Europe, they can now come to Africa, they can now come to Kenya. Of course, um, there was a Jamaican man who was asking for the right of abode for them to be also able to live here. So it's good that our brothers and sisters will be able to come back. But one of the greatest drawbacks, it is opens up the country to the entire world, both the good and the bad, both the Babylonians and our people. And if you know anything about Kenya, We acknowledge the ancestors in the wind family. There's so much wind and the sun is shining and the ancestors are here. It's those kind of days where there should be no wind, but stories for other days. So on the one hand, that's a great thing, but Kenya is actually the gateway to East Africa and Africa. It is the only country, African country, actually developing world country that has a headquarters of the United Nations. We have the United Nations Environmental Program. Was that done by design? Because now the next most biggest conversation is about the environment. And by the way, they've tried to take, to remove the UNEP from here. That's what it's called, United Nations Environmental Program, from Kenya several times. I think that Canada even offered to host it and all these things, but it's still here. Secondly, with everything you've been seeing our president doing, it's like they're setting up Kenya to be one of the new world order centers. But Kenya is the gateway for the rest of Africa, especially from the East, the Eastern gateway family. There are over a hundred multi multinational organizations here. Even Monsanto is here. All the ones, all the players you can imagine are all here. All the spy agencies are here military presence. And then you see having an actual headquarters of a UN here means that all kinds of characters can come through because all nations have their, you know, because there's a UN, a lot of nations that wouldn't have a presence in other of African countries or developing world countries have an embassy here. So it's like, for me, the way I saw it is that they're trying to flood They're trying to, we acknowledge the ancestors in the wind. They're trying to flood Africa. They're trying to have an open passageway. 
because you see our president in order to survive he signed something like that he made a deal with the so-called devil and certain some of these policies are literally just to make money because uh, the government is in debt and they have to pay back and everything but it's much deeper than that family because Kenya now is not being run on what we want it's being run on what the people we owe money to are saying and our president said that when he came into power he was like we are slaves to those who we have debt to which means we are slaves to America and China and they're both battling like this but we ran we ran to China became their slave and then now we've run back to America which is what Ruto has done so uh, there's a lot of policies that they're implementing to create a way for them because any foreigner can also own land in Kenya and a lot of people come and they don't leave so for me the way i saw it is it will be an amazing way like if sugar hits the fan tomorrow you as my african american brother and sister you as my caribbean brother and sister can hop on a plane and come to kenya but realize kenya is also like a mini babylon at least the nairobi and all this stuff because if you go to Nairobi now, family, there's a lot of strange people moving in. They're trying to make it like a San Francisco. They talk about how Nairobi is like this, you know, it's, it's, we've, we've bowed too much to the Mzungu culture. And we've, it's like our, we've melted our culture into their culture. It's, it's, I don't know. Let me know if you've been to Nairobi and if you know what I'm, over, I'm saying, family. So it's like they're opening the gateways for themselves as it's open to others. But we also have spiritual gates. You know, every airport family, they have their psychic police. It's not just the regular police that you're seeing there. Even on our ferry here, near where I live, they literally have psychic police who are able to say, hey, that one's carrying a couple joints, that one's carrying this, that one's carrying, that. literally family. And then of course, you know, the ones who do that carry their psychic protection, you know, it's, it's a very interesting world of, ma of magic, lower level magic, but still. So it is like, how do I explain this? So we have our psychic police but there's a certain way that they're trying to flood this nation when sugar hits the fan in the other part of the world. At least that's, for me, that's what I thought. That's what I intuited. That's what I, I felt. They were trying to flood, to totally, totally flood Africa with so-called undesirables, especially when we start seeing things happen. But you know, their time is up, family. That whole narrative and that whole storyline, they've lost control of it. Africa's rightful rulers are now here. And as I was saying, there are psychic police, there are psychic barriers, there are psychic walls. And somehow, whatever they intend for bad always turns out for our highest good. And to our African family across the world, with everything that's happening in Babylon right now, at least you have a way in, is what I would say. And I'd be saving up, I'd be doing research, because in fact, the first flight of um, visa-free tourists arrived, I think a couple of days ago. They've already rolled this out, it's already happening. But they will not be able, regardless of what they try now, because they're trying physical things that won't work. They will not be able, family, to so-called flood Africa or to overwhelm us with the wrong kind of low vibrational people. It's not gonna happen. It's like where I live in Diani family. There's so many empty houses, like almost 100 to 200 empty houses of people who came 
They fell in love with this little island. They built their, you know, they built mansions, beautiful mansions. Then they, they went and they thought they were going to move here when they retired or they were going to move here, whatever. A lot of them have died off, but they didn't tell their families about their homes because it was like their secret paradise. Maybe this was an Epstein Island. I'm serious. Others have like, you know, others have, have, because of what's happened in Europe and how they've been hit, they're only able to come for two months and then they have to go, to come for three months and then they have to go or to come for a month. So this shows you that you, they can build, they can do everything. But if the energy rejects them, the energy rejects them. And so these are interesting times, family. These are very, very interesting times. Make sure that you're focused on the great, you know, hey Errol, make sure that you're focused, family, on the great transition that we are having. Make sure you're focused on the positive and that you're sending your love and your prayers of protection to Mama Africa. Tuko, pamoja.